Dracula, the fictional blood-sucking Transylvanian bad boy who's been scaring the absolute bejesus out of people all over the world for over a century. But was Dracula actually based on an old Irish legend about a magical dwarf king? Let's find out. Okay, so you might be wondering, what, what the feck am I even talking about? How could Dracula be Irish? Everybody knows that he's from Transylvania in Romania, but is he? Is he? Okay, so we need to jump back in time a little bit. Well, I say a little bit, it's about 1200 years. So just a little bit. Sixth century, County Derry, Northern Ireland. Also, my neighbors are building something out their back and there's a lot of noise, so apologies for that. I can't do anything about it. County Derry at the time was ruled by a man by the name of Aurchok. And Aurchok was said to have been a powerful wizard. He was also a chieftain. Some accounts say that Aurchok was a dwarf. Other accounts say that he had some type of deformation. But one thing that everybody agreed on about Aurchok was that he was an absolute asshole. He he was paranoid, he was suspicious of everyone, he killed people for no reason, and the villagers were sick of it, so they wanted him dead. So one night, Aurchok being the paranoid man that he was, he suspected his wife was cheating on him. So he climbed out the window, tried to get to her room, and he fell from his castle and died. The villagers found him soon after and they buried him as fast as they could because they just wanted to see the end of him, and they did. Until the next day when Aurchok came back. Aurchok rose from the dead and he started terrifying the villagers. He demanded that they cut their wrists and fill bowls of blood for him to sustain himself. You know, what an absolute creep. Like, it's, just, ugh, it's actually giving me the shivers. The villagers obviously terrified, like you would be. And this is probably how town council meetings came about. Hey, we've really got to do something about the guy that wants to drink all the blood. Do you agree? Yes, I agree. Let's do it. And the villagers, obviously terrified, they didn't know what to do. So they approached a local chieftain by the name of Cahan. And they told Cahan the full story about how Aurchok came back from the dead and now he's terrorizing the village. And they asked him as nicely as they could to please kill Aurchok. So Cahan, being the badass chieftain that he was, he went to the village and he slayed Aurchok. And he buried him, standing upright, as you do with a dead chieftain. Chieftain. The villagers celebrated and they were all safe again, until the next day, when our chalk came back again. He was demanding more blood, he was terrifying people even more than he was the previous day, and this just continued. So the villagers again approached Cahan, asked him to kill our chalk, and he did. He buried him in an upright position, and again the following day, our chalk came back and started terrorizing the villagers. So Cahan at this stage was absolutely sick of our chalk. So Cahan went to a local druid and he explained to the druid what was going on. And the druid told Cahan that our chalk was now part of the Nave Morav, the undead or the walking dead. Zombie reference, the druid also told Cahan that because Aurchok was such a powerful wizard he could never actually be fully killed, he could only be put into like a state of suspension or sleep. But the druid gave Cahan instructions and this is what he told him to do. So in order for Aurchok to be killed, Cahan had to kill him with a wooden sword made from wood from a yew tree. Once Aurchok was dead he had to be buried head down in the ground and a large slab of stone had to be placed over him so that he couldn't get out and around his grave Thorn bushes were placed so that it would be extra hard for him to get out, I guess. It's like old time security. And that was finally enough to kill the blood sucking dwarf king wizard. <laughs> There's a sentence. <laughs> But the villagers after that, they lived happily ever after and they didn't really have anything to worry about other than small things like the Black Plague and things like that. So they were fine. So now let's flash forward about 1200 years to Dublin, Ireland in 1847, the year Bram Stoker was born. And Bram Stoker, as you know, was the Irish author that wrote Dracula. But as a child, Stoker was struck down with a mysterious illness and he was confined to his bed for months. His mother took care of him and during this time she would fill his head with stories of ghosts and goblins and ghouls and old Irish tales and things like that. Luckily, Stoker made a full recovery, he went on to university and he followed in his father's footsteps being a civil servant. But Stoker was always drawn to the theatre and around 1890 Stoker began managing the Lyceum Theatre in London and it was during this time he started to write his novels, one of them being the most famous one. Dracula. Now this is the bit where it gets a bit confusing. See there's a lot of different ideas about where the inspiration for Dracula came from. A lot of people believe that Vlad the Impaler was the true inspiration for Dracula. Plus his name was also Vlad the Third Dracul. So it's, it's kind of easy to think that you know that's the direct link. But that doesn't seem to be the case. And there definitely was some similarities between Dracula and Vlad the Impaler. They both fought against the Turks. They were both princes. But I think that's kind of where it ends. And these are historical things that they're actually based upon. This actually doesn't get into to who Dracula was or why he was. There's no way to know how Vlad the Impaler was as a person, so we can't actually say that Dracula acted just like how Vlad the Impaler acted because we just don't know. But Dracula's character, like who Dracula was, his main driving force, seems to be based on our good old friend, the blood-sucking dwarf king called Aurchok. So let's break it down. 
So Vlad the Impaler definitely had a thirst for blood, but it was more in like a warmongery kind of murdery way. He was also a prince, he also fought against the Turks, just like Dracula. Vlad the Impaler, I'm sure he terrorized plenty of villages in his time, but I guess it was kind of part of his job. But now let's compare Dracula to Aurochok. Aurochok, on the other hand, had a literal taste for blood, going around his village demanding people slice their wrists to feed him. I mean, come on. So like he was full on vampire. And another thing we know about Aurochok was that the only way to kill him was by piercing him with a wooden sword. I mean, who else dies that way? Wooden stake, you drive it through Dracula's heart, that's how you kill him. But also Aurochok was said to have magical powers, which I mean Dracula could hypnotize people, he could shapeshift, he could fly. I'm starting to think that there's definitely characteristics from, from the legend of Aurochok that Stoker took and implanted him into Dracula's like character. He drinks blood. He terrorizes villagers, he comes back from the dead over and over, he can only be killed with a wooden stake. I mean, come on, if this isn't Dracula, then what are the chances of somebody else just creating this out of nothing? This had to be taken from something. So I think for people to say that it's based on Vlad the Impaler, there's very few similarities. I think it's a bit of it's just a bit of an easy way out. There's another theory that Dracula was actually based on an actor called Henry Irving, one of the most famous actors of his time. Stoker actually managed him, and it was while he worked with him in the Lyceum Theatre he started to write his novels. But people also said that because he was working under Irving, that Irving became the main inspiration for Dracula. Again, I'm trying to see the similarities, and the only similarity I can see between Dracula and Irving is physical appearance. I think Stoker based the look of Dracula on Henry Irving because he was kind of gaunt, pale looking, mysterious, a little bit creepy, charismatic. There's something about him that definitely gives off the Dracula vibe. So this is my overall theory. I think that Bram Stoker had three different inspirations for Dracula. Vlad the Impaler, when he fought the Turks, he was a prince living in Romania. His physical appearance, I think, came from Henry Irving, kind of gaunt, tall, thin looking man, a little bit evil, mysterious, kind of hypnotic and just alluring. But the parts of Dracula's dark personality, the blood drinking, the terrorizing the villages, the hypnotism, being able to fly and shapeshift, I believe that all these characteristics came from the Irish blood drinking dwarf king, Aurochak. I think it's definitely possible that while Stoker was sick in bed, listening to his mother filling his head with tales of ghosts and ghouls, one of those stories could have been the story of the Aurochak. And whether consciously or subconsciously Stoker remembered that story, I think years later he repurposed it, he shaped it, and it became one of the most loved and feared characters of all time. So I could be wrong on this entire thing because when I was researching this I found a quote from Bram Stoker's son from an interview who said that the inspiration from Dracula came to his father one night in a nightmarish dream after eating too much dressed crab. And this is an actual fact, this is an actual genuine quote from Bram Stoker's son. So for all I know it could be wrong and Dracula could have been inspired by something as simple as eating too much seafood. I'll leave the links in the description. And another re interesting thing I found when researching this is if you translate the words bad blood from English into Irish, you get this. You get the word Drachwil, which, like, that's Dracula. There's no doubt about it. That's Dracula. What are the chances that bad blood translates into Irish as Drachwil? I mean, that's too much of a coincidence to be a coincidence, if that makes sense. My conclusion, was Dracula actually Irish? It's definitely possible that some of Dracula's characteristics were influenced by the legend of Aurochok, and there's no doubt about that in my mind based on what I've read. Dracula had pale skin, very like the Irish. He wasn't great in sunlight, also like the Irish. But I do believe that if Dracula actually was Irish, he would have been a bigger fan of drinking the black stuff and not the red stuff. But in all seriousness, I do believe that Dracula was a mashup of different characters. Stoker took his influences from three different people, Vlad the Impaler, Henry Irving, and the legend of Aurochok. And he took certain characteristics, certain traits from each tree, and he put them all together. From Vlad the Impaler, he took his social standing, some of his backstory. From Henry Irving, he got Dracula's physical, kind of gaunt, mysterious appearance. From Aurochok, I think he took the, the wooden stake, the blood drinking, the coming back from the dead. Each one of these things by themselves isn't really anything, but when you put the three of them together, you get Dracula. But either way, Dracula is taking his place in pop culture and I'm sure he's going to be scaring generations to come. And I think it's awesome to think that an Irishman is responsible for that. And that's it. I know I'm a day late for Halloween. I had two Halloween videos that I was going to do and they both fell through. That's just how it goes sometimes. Those videos will be made. They weren't really, really Halloween themed. It would have just been really nice at Halloween because they were a little bit mysterious, but you will see those videos eventually. Thanks a lot for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, don't forget to hit the like button. Subscribe down below if you haven't. And I will see you all again next Friday with another video. Bye.